With this new development in the oil and gas reserves as well as offshore windmill interest, um, we've had to start balancing, okay, where are these gonna go? What are they gonna interfere with? How is it gonna impact our access? And this is unbelievable. There are zero no-take marine areas in the Gulf of Maine. There is nowhere that is completely sacrosanct. So we need these areas of replenishment that would have the chance to adapt to the change in climate. When we first started, many people in the Rhode Island community said, we don't want turbines and this is going to ruin our lives. The oral history of the tribe says that more than 15,000 years ago, the ancient Narragansett lived out where the ocean is now. Those villages overnight began to be inundated with water, and the people had to evacuate. You really do need to take a step back and look regionally. Commerce has very clearly talked about um, anticipated change in terms of more shipping on the water, more commerce, in terms of the Panama Canal being deepened, the Arctic opening. That's all we're asking for is a fair shake in this process. Just don't want to get run over by it. The most important part is identifying the right area for a wind farm so you're not ruining the resources, you're not messing up critical habitat. This, in many ways, is about the rights of states. This is very much about states' rights. This is about states being able to sit as equals at the table with the feds and saying, these are our concerns. You need to hear us. We need to address them.